komm, hier mein Little Jacky, nur absurd mit Backy, have a bitte Cracky, till the boat comes in. Tanz to the daddy, sing to the mummy, tanz to the daddy, to the mummy, sing. Thou shalt have a fishy, on a little dishy, thou shalt have a fishy, when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have a fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have a fishy when the boat comes in. This place is like a pigsty. Industrials is sluggish again. Filthy, a downright disgrace. Non-ferrous metals. That's what you should put your money in. Very bullish, non-ferrous metals. Is that what you've put your money in, Mr. Ford? There was an old fella looking after mine for me. The time I went and got it back. Ah, it's a big responsibility looking after other folks' money. Who in the world? Got a nice little car. There's lots of cars around here. This is Lavender Avenue. Aren't you going to go and see who it is? You're at home, then. I oh, must be. I can't get a chance to read my paper. Mr Channing to see you. Come in, Channing. Sit down, won't you? Uh, get us another cup, will you, pet? Well, now, Channing, we'd better not beat about the bush. We've got a lot to do. I never expected you back so quick. I'll go and put the kettle on. No, wait. How's baby? Asleep for a change. Come into the kitchen. You can give us all your news in there. What's wrong, Arthur? Are you still angry because I was rotten to you? No, not anymore. I showed Aunt Ellen young Arthur's photograph. She thought she could detect a look of my father, but she's quite wrong. He's every inch of Seton. She's looking forward to seeing him. We're a long way from Kent. Six hours in a train. Yes, I know. I but... think you'd better sit down, my dear. There's something I have to tell you. We'll finish this once and for all. It is finished. You're damn sure of yourself. It has to be finished, man. Use your brains. Otherwise, you'll use the information you have against us to send Roddy and me to prison, is that it? You know I will. I'm not going back in without company. Those two friends of yours who helped to blow the house up. Sugar? No, thank you. What about them? Well, I've nothing against them. They were in no way accountable or responsible. Any more than I was. For God's sake, Ford, who's going to believe that? You blew up Mandrake Place. How can you possibly argue otherwise? And your chum Roddy hired a couple of thugs to give me a belt in. How could he possibly argue otherwise? Well, I'm sorry about that, honestly. And so is Roddy, believe me. But, but I'm afraid it's irrelevant. A belt is never irrelevant, Chang. Do you No, thank you. No, listen to me, please. What you did is known. What did I do? You purchased a useless coal mine in order to attack the foundations of the house. You're wrong there, Channing. I behaved like a fool. I thought there was still coal in that bit. That's why I bought it. Ah, damn it, man, you blew it up. You purchased God knows how much explosives and... You'll have a hard time proving that. But you set it off. How can you deny that? Oh, I used a bit, I Just to demolish some old work in, see if I could find a new seam. A bluff. Uh, no, thank you. Funny stuff, explosives. You were in the suppers, you should know. I do know. Sometimes it can lie around for years, so they tell me. As harmless as that cup of coffee you're drinking. And one day, something happens and bam, up it goes. Volatile, I think the word is. Yes, but... There was an old fellow used to work in the Arabella pit, name of Wharton. He used to fire the shots there. He fired one too many. A bit of stone got him in the head. He acted like he was shell-shocked. You know what shell-shock's like, Johnny. God knows, I've seen enough. Aye, me and all. But he used to get these queer ideas in his head, ideas you just couldn't shift. Well, there's a special word for that, isn't there? An educated man like you would know. Obsession? Obsession, yes. It seems he thought there was still some live explosive left in my pit, all ready to be fired. For God's sake. Who could possibly believe that? You will, for one. Well, nobody else will. Just listen. Old Wharton lived on his own in a cottage near the Duke's estate. And he used the same pub as a friend of mine uses, Tom Seaton. And when he heard I'd bought the pit, he told Tom about his uh, obsession, and naturally Tom told me. Of course, we didn't believe it, but all the same, we felt we'd better make sure. Or rather, I did, and Tom Seaton volunteered to help us. He's a miner, you see. I'm not. Knows his way around a pit, does Tom. That's the only credible thing you've said so far. Just let me finish. Tom's the caring sort, you see, Channing. And I like to think I am and all. And we've got these navvies and bricklayers and joiners coming to work on the new housing estate above the pit. And we couldn't stand the idea that they might get blown up. Fellas who'd survived the Somme and wipers, a lot of them, blown up on a building site just because we were down that pit looking for coal. Not that 56 pounds of explosive would bring down Mandrake Place. Well, of course it would not. You must have used a couple of hundredweight at least. Just let me finish, will you? I never set out to demolish Mandrake Place. All I wanted to do was to flatten a couple of worked out seams and find a bit more coal. Only... Only... Only what? 
Just suppose old Wharton had been telling the truth. It might be a hundred to one chance, maybe it's even a thousand to one. But we daren't take the risk. So we got another caring man to clear folks out of the way. Matthew Headley. The very fella. And down Tom and me went. <laughs> you should be on the music hall. There's nothing to laugh at, Channing. It's a serious business. You know what happened. All the same, you'd better refresh my memory. You must remember. Wharton had been right. And me and Tom moving about in the dark, how we did it, I'll never know. But we set our charge, 56 pounds, and it must have acted like a detonator on the big stuff old Wharton had left down there. Irony of life, eh, Channing? We went down looking for coal. Levy's put a few men in work. And we blew up a masterpiece by accident. That's the story you're going to tell, is it? Do you really think people will believe that? I'm not going to tell it, Bonnie lad. You are. You're never serious. Of course I'm serious. You're off to live in Kent. We are off to live in Kent. But you can't. Why not? Your notice. You have to give a month's notice. I telephoned the education office from Kent. They'll accept what's left of the school holidays in lieu of a month's notice. I rather fancy they have my successor already lined up. Somebody's cousin, no doubt. Don't try to change the subject. Very well, let's talk about moving. You can't expect us to up sticks and go just like that. Why not? Why not? My family's here. And mine's in Kent. One aunt. And several cousins. They're young Arthur's family, too. Folk I've never seen. That'll be remedied. And anyway, your family could always come down to visit us. Can you see Dad leaving his shops? He'd be very welcome if he did. Would he, Arthur? Welcome by your Auntie Ellen in her big posh house. What about Tom and Dolly, the way they talk, the way they are? And even Billy, a doctor, he should be acceptable, but he's not. He's a red. The people who wouldn't laugh at him would despise him. You want me out of the way because you think the same and all, don't you? I don't, and you know it. Out of here. Gala Shield, the people I know, the things I believe. You've been ill, quite seriously ill. Or so our doctor says, and Billy agrees with him. This climate is a harsh one. It's bad for you. Not like Kent. That's not the answer. Tom's wife died of tuberculosis. For a time, there was a fear that his son had it, too. Tuberculosis is the scourge of Tyneside. You wouldn't deny it? No, it's a killer, all right. But if there were enough eggs and milk and fresh vegetables... But there's not. Where we're going, tuberculosis is unknown. Where we're going? You sound so certain. I am. Right. Let's be off. Off where? To bribe this old fellow, Wharton? You'll have a job. He was found dead two days ago. Well, natural causes, nothing to worry about. There's his picture. Remember him? Should I? I should hope so. You and me went to see him the first day you arrived up here. Now then, let's go and tell Horry Manor's a fairy story. Well, where are we going? Horry Manners or Durham Jail? You yeah, know, but skin and bone. Look who's talking. Oh, don't start. I do try to eat something honest, I do. I just can't seem to manage it. Have you seen your doctor? You've seen yours? My doctor's dying, you know that. Anyway, I know what's wrong with, wrong with me. Is it bad? Oh, it's not catching anyway. Overwork, that's all it is. Two weeks holiday and I'll be fine. Now, well, why don't you just get Because yourself... I can't, ma'am. Not yet. But you. I promise you'll see a doctor. How are you? How are you, Jessie? Ma'am. Half an up back yet? It's back all right. Oh, you left them with a bairn again. It's his bairn. Well, I hope you gave him some to eat. He knows how to butter his bread, does Arthur. Maybe it'll be cucumber sandwiches now. That's what the posh folk eat, isn't it, Billy? You two had a row again. A row? Go and give your dye hand in the shop. You suppose he'd let us? Well, he will if you make him. Go on. Yes. Sam. He's taken us away, me and the baby. He says we've got to go. Three for them to change. Oh, you're back to the soup kitchen, are you, Doctor? All right, I've got a bowl of broth. How much do I owe you? Well, you want us to put another slate, then? You obstinate young bugger. Will you never learn? Look, if you want to kill yourself, then patients of yours down that free clinic will never stop you. When one of them ever give you a bowl of broth? About the same time as they have one themselves. We're out of cocoa, aren't we? Our Jessie's here. Well, that won't help the cocoa shortage. She's a bit upset, Dad. My man wants us to leave them alone for a bit. Well, what's she upset about? Arthur, by the sound of it. Yeah, that I don't know. He's got his fair beat. She's never off Arthur's back. She didn't want him. What in the world do you want to go and money him for? Well, you don't know that, Dad. Nobody does. All right, just stop coming to the club. Will you say what's on your mind? All right. She married Arthur Ashton because she wanted her brother to be a doctor, and Arthur had a bit of money put by. That wasn't a marriage. It was more like a business transaction. And she's not keeping her side of it, is she? Leave Gala Shield. But what on earth for? 
better job, Zoe says. Better than being a headmaster? I don't believe it. Well, it's true enough, so far as it goes. I think there's another reason. Yes, ma'am, I do. I think I'm being punished for turning against him when Tom was in trouble. Tom and Matt Headley. And I think I'm being punished for being a socialist and all. Where I'm going, socialism's illegal. It's worse than bigamy. And is that all you're being punished for? What else is there? There's Jack. Let's get on, shall we? You sure you don't want to run through it all again? You should never rehearse fairy stories. Sir Horatio Manners, please. I'll telephone, he's expecting me. The name's Ford. Something to tell me, Jose? Uh, not me, no. Uh, Major Channing here. I'll stick to Mr, if you don't mind. What is it, Mr Channing? That unfortunate affair at Mandrake Place. Go on. And it's a little difficult to explain, but I'm afraid you've been misinformed. Have I? Let Mr. Channing tell us about it. Very well. Just tell it in your own way, Mr. Channing. There is only one way. I'm going to tell you a story that is obvious and palpable nonsense. A fairy story, in fact. And I'm going to swear to the truth of every word of it, if necessary, in court. Are you his mum, mister? His daddy is his mummy. 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 You're never serious. I told you I'd swear to it. But this is preposterous. I told you that too. This old chap Wharton told you he'd left explosives, live explosives, in a mine. He did. Very well. Let's go and visit him. I'd like to see this for myself. Unfortunately, that won't be possible. Why not? He died two days ago. How very convenient. Aye, wasn't it? Now, don't get all excited. He was an old fellow with a weak heart, and he died on his own. No help from me. So you're prepared to swear that Ford here is innocent? Yes. Does it not occur to you there may be gossip? That some people might even say Ford bribed you to let him off the hook. Of course it does, but it's not true. No? Do you give me your word as an officer and gentleman that Ford hasn't bribed you? I do. My word of honour. Then I must believe you. May I go, please? Nothing I'd like better. You too. Oh, just give us a couple of minutes, will you, Hurry? Would you mind waiting for us in the car? Me and Sir Horatio have got a bit of business to discuss. It is. That uh, Jesse Seaton, you know, that stuck-up school teacher. That's a man. Man? Why should I have a skirt on him for the Burns wing? All I'm saying is she made a bargain. The bargains has to be kept. So it's no use going crying to your mum about it. And you want to remember that when your turn comes. Like our Tom, Dad? Look, just because our Tom's wrong doesn't mean our Jesse's right. Now what are you going to do? We're not going to talk to me, Dodo. What do you think? <laughs> well, where is she? You've been bubbling, have you? What if I have? I've known you crying since you were 12 years old. I remember when McConaughey died. McConaughey? Ah, uh, your cat next door's bulldog got him. Oh, surely you remember McConaughey, Billy. Jack Black with a white moustache and a white tip to his tail. Oh, all right, he was a bonny cat. It's a bit late to hold a memorial service for him. Now, what are you crying for this time? Now, don't you start bullying. Am I bullying? Or am I asking what our father's got a right to ask? I've got to go away, Dad. What do you mean, away? My lord and master has spoken. We've got to go and live in Kent. Don't talk 
daft old Kanye. He works here. Anybody at home? There he is. Ask him yourself. Money? What money? After Mandrake Place came down, you said you'd carry on with the housing estate. So I shall. Pays for me 17 acres, then. Oh, the due date's not for another three months. I never pay before I have to. You should know that by now. All right. Pierce for demolishing Mandrake Place, then. I beg your pardon. You wanted it down, I knocked it down. Now you owe us for it. A thousand quid, you said. Oh, that. Oh, if you had knocked it down, I'd have paid you. Of course I would. You had my word. But you didn't. What do you mean? I... Channing came here. Don't you remember? And in your presence, he told me that what happened to Mandrake Place was an accident. But you were in no way responsible. And you'll swear to it. In a court of law, if need be. I owe you nothing. Not for three months at any rate. A lot can go wrong in three months. I see. You're really after us, aren't you? I am. Because I cheated you. You're saying you never cheated me. I used to like you for and I don't. For reasons of my own concern. I think you've kept your friend Channing waiting long enough. He's a gentleman, after all. He gave me his word that you didn't bribe him, and I accept it. What other weapon had you? Blackmail? How could I possibly blackmail the likes of him? Oh, well, sooner or later, we're all vulnerable to somebody. You want to remember that. You pushed him here, all the way here? Obviously. It never occurred to you to wonder what folks might think or say, come to that. The folks say a lot of things around here, not all of them pleasant, but I wanted to come here and my wife was out. I could hardly leave the child on his own. He's coming on lovely. How are you, Arthur? Hello, Arthur. Hello, Arthur. You a fancy drink? No, thank you. I assume Jesse's told you my news. It's what I came for. Quite so. I haven't come here to ask permission. We're going. Oh, it's your business, lad. But I think you have a right to be told why. I've told him that, no. I doubt it. Now, steady on. Wished. I doubt if your sister's reasons equate with mine. Near where I was born, there's a public school called Brailsford. It's not one of the great schools, Eton, say, or Winchester, but it's not without distinction, and its academic record is excellent. I've been offered a post there as housemaster. What might that be? The school's residential. The boys live in buildings called houses. Each house is looked after by a master who's known as a housemaster, a sort of foster parent. And you'd be doing that? Turning out little empire builders? A job to be proud of. Tell them how you got the job, Arthur. Or I will. Yes, he. Very well. I, I was invited to apply. I have a cousin in London who's a man of some distinction. You mean he's rich? Well, you don't get sent to jail for that. No, not yet. Go on. Huh? He was recently elected to the Board of Governors of the school, and as I say, I was invited to apply. So you're somebody's cousin in all, well, eh, Arthur? Now it's like a bit of grease for making the wheels turn smooth. How long before you have to go? Quite soon. My predecessor was a bachelor. His quarters will need a little readjustment for a family man. It's the sort of thing one's wife is expected to take care of. One's wife? You've learned the jargon already, haven't you? No, I learned it years ago. After all, I went to Brailsford myself, while my father could afford it. Uh -huh. Does it uh, pay much, this house, Marshall? Uh, no offence, I just happen to think money's important. Uh, and I agree with you. It pays £600 a year, which is nearly double what I get now. It also offers free accommodation, food and servants, shorter terms than I have at present, and the opportunity for research. £600 a year? Why, that's nigh on 12 quid a week. And it offers one thing more important even than that. What's that? An education for my son. If I'm a housemaster there, a place for him is reserved. Free? If necessary. And there are scholarships. And what'll I be, Arthur? The house mistress? No, no, that'll do from you. Will it, Arthur? Will it do from me? Or will you have to hide me away somewhere in case I lower the tone of the school? Here? Yeah. Yeah? Aye. Shortcut. There's a matter I've got to see. Madam? Mate. Friend. Oh, I see. Hi. I think you do. So long. Thanks for the lift. Don't you ever stop working? Work this? Labour and love this, Jack. That's what I've come to talk to you about. Labour? Love. Now, you best come inside, then. Oh, fancy a drop of beer, Jack? Ruin your own beer and all. 
Mm. Would you give us it? Took nine first and the Harrogate shoe. <laughs> All the best. All the best. Love you, sir. Makes the world go round, they say. The prosecution's off. You sure? Certain. Boy, I'll drink to that, lad. Are you not too pleased? Oh, I got a bit tricky, Bonnie lad. Some fella did the dirty on us. He'll be paid when the time comes. Oh, well, if you want any help, Jack. No, thanks, Tom. I'll manage. You've got love to think about. You grew yourself, did you? At the big house, I. And Dolly arranges them. It's time you were married. Well, you said you'd fix it. So I will. Trip to Scarborough, maybe. Would Blackpool be better? I never could stand more of them. <laughs> but it sounds more like a holiday than a divorce. Well, you might as well do it in comfort. Adultery's the only chance we've got. You can't see me and some tart up against a back lane wall and a private detective taking photos, now can you? <laughs> Wouldn't be your style, Jack. Never was. Might as well have a bit of comfort while you can. I've, uh, <clears throat> I've been making a few inquiries. Why? About this divorce business. It takes a while, uh, decree nice, I decree absolute. And while it's going on, you and Dolly will have to live apart. What? Now, don't start yelling at me, man. I'm your marrow. I didn't make the law. Live apart? But we've been man and wife ever since we moved here. She's got a bear on the way, man. There's only one way around that, Tom. That bear's mine. Oh, hello, Dolly. I just dropped in to tell Tom. I just fixed it, pet. There'll be no law keys. Not for you, neither. No. We're all free men, thank God. Free? You're not free of me yet, though, are you, Jack? And you don't seem to be in much of a hurry to do anything about it, are you? You're wrong there. I'm off this weekend. Start things rolling. I couldn't very well do that until I knew I was going to be out of jail now, could I? I'm sorry, Jack. But I still don't understand. What? The bane on the way. How can you say it's yours? I'm sure Dog got a solicitor these days, Tom. Well, yeah, I don't know. Well, if he has, you and Dolly go and see him. It's too complicated for me. I'm not punishing you, Bonnie Lass. Not this time. It's what you're going to have to say if you and Tom want to marry. And you believe us. Good night, sir. Well, uh, I better be on my way. So long. Hey, Tommy. See what I've got. Pay for it, soldier. Always take one when they're offered, soldier. Here. Now, what's the matter? But why can't we sit in the kitchen? Because we don't have to. This is what they call a sitting room, Matt Headley. Well, we'll sit in it. All right, you're right as usual. Nothing like a bit sit. Unless it's a nice lie down. We'll have no dirty talk if you don't mind. And no dirty deeds neither. Oh, what's dirty about? We're very near married. I well, nearly's not quite. Never was. Now, listen to me. A fella came to see Jack. Oh, I'm not interested. Well, you should be. It was that Channing. The one that was going to put you all in prison. Well, now he's not. You sure? It looks that way. Jack was going to make him tell a whole lot of lies. Blackmail by the sound of it. But how in the world do you know that? I listened at the keyhole. Will the men push the prams in Kent? Only when they must. He's asleep. Six hundred a year, you said. And our keep, and help in the house. That's right. Sounds like a palace. Someone else was going to set me up in a palace once. I believe you. This wouldn't be a palace, my dear. A comfortable home, that's all. And what about the one we've got? I thought your mother might care for it. Your father can afford it, believe me. Jack's house, that's what Mum wants. But this one's as good, or almost. Maybe. Jack never lived here. I'm going out again, Arthur. Another damn meeting, I suppose. That's right. Isn't it a little early for meetings? I need to walk, to think. I'm not used to having a pistol pointed at me. Can you think of any other way I could have done it? No. You're a clever one, I'll give you that. The boy's in my house. Oh, by the way, it'll be known as Ashton's house. But, my dear, how grand. Their parents and the men will be richer than any others you've known. But they're nonetheless boys, growing up from childhood to adolescence, and one hopes maturing as they do so. For that, they'll need my help, Jesse. And yours. It's work for which we're both qualified. I'll feed the baby, and then I'm going out. Until the meeting's over? That's right. And how will you get back? One of the comrades will see us home. Don't look like that. It's not a word I shall be allowed to use much longer. Thank you for thinking about Mam in this house. I bet she won't take it, but it's just what she needs. I still say he's got no right. No, Doctor, you do not. What happens between a husband and wife is our own business and nobody else's? It's like living in the dark ages. What is? 
Getting on. Looking out for your wife and Ben. Making 12 quid a week. That's what he wants. Nobody seems to think about our Jess. What about her? It'll destroy her. Get yeah, over him. It might be the making of her. <laughs> Chilly for plodging, Mrs. Ashton. Life of leisure, is it, Mr. Ford? Have you worked blown up palaces? So I hear. Dangerous and all. Don't you fret, Mrs. Ashton. Your Tom's off the hook. And Matt. And you. And me. Sit down a minute. Beach is free. And there's nobody to see us. Ben, all right? Your man? He's fine. Yeah, you're very near frozen. Like I said. Not the weather for plodging. That'll do, Jack. Only the second time I ever saw your feet. First time I went and sat over behind them rocks, you remember? Were well, the gentleman of leisure then, and all. Courting and you out of a job, trust you. Now that'll do. You can't if you're catching your death. Galashiel's leading lady comrade. It's just a joke, Mrs. Ashton. Not a very funny one, Mr. Ford. I'm leaving Galashield. Leaving? What on earth for? Because my husband says so. I see. Do you, Jack? What do you see? A lot of posh little boys in straw boaters and eating jackets. House matches and Latin and tea on the lawn. What are you on about? He's wangled himself a job as housemaster at a public school. Growing up in the world, just like me. Well, some of us has got to get on, Bonnie Lass. Otherwise, you'd have nobody to get mad at. You don't want to go, do you? No. Want to stay here with Billy and set the world to rights? I was happy here, Jack. Aye. So was our Bonnie Lass. But it never lasts. I was going. Is it? Yes, it is. Turn your head away. What? I said, turn your head away. I've got to put my stockings on. Honey, mister. Some of us have to get on, eh, Jack? Some of us never even get the chance. Me up it. Where's Tommy? Down by the burn, fishing. Fishing? He's far too little to be left like that. It's dangerous. What, that bit stream? Look, we're going to have a row. Let's do it properly and leave young Tommy out of it, huh? A row? Why should we? That's what I want you to tell me, Pet. Why, oh, it's because Jack came here, isn't it? It's not that. I don't mind him coming here. It was what he said. About living apart, you mean? Well, of course I do. Oh, surely you can see, Tom. It's not possible. Not round here. Well, I wouldn't have thought it'd be impossible anywhere. Not anymore. Not even if we could get married after. You're saying we'll have to move away? But it wouldn't be for long. Well, where the hell would we go? Me work's here. We could take your dad's offer. I could live over the shop. And what about me? Well, your dad wants you near him, doesn't he? Well, then you could go back to him and your mum. She needs help to look after him anyway, Tom. She's worn out. I see. That's what you've got in mind for us, is it? Tom Seaton, male nurse. It's time that marrow of yours was back. Well, there's no rush. Isn't there? Not for you, maybe. But this is getting to be a bit of a habit, Matt Headley. And it's not that easy to break. Oh, blast! 
saved by the bell. Well, don't start fretting. Once we're married, we won't hear it. Oh. All right, I'm coming. Lady Caroline Summers for Jack. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, Jack won't be long. Wouldn't let you sit down? Thank you. I gather you're not to be prosecuted after all. I'm glad. Aye, may I know. You open your roads again, Doctor? No. George Lansby speaking to the local ILP branch. I'll be listening for a change. <laughs> what about that other doctor? The doctor Stoker? What about it, ma'am? Well, you said he had cancer. So he has. It's past my help, though. But they know where to find us if I'm needed. Is there anything I can get you before I go? No. Thanks for asking. Dad? Sean? I told me, ma'am, she should see her doctor. Aye. Did you listen to you? I do we ain't listen to Lansbury. It's a lassie you should be listening to. There's no rush. Oh, aye. He got his whole life ahead of him. It'll last that long. What about you, my lady? Hey? See your doctor, your son says. Are you going to tell us when you're going to go? That war, sometimes it seems it was half a lifetime ago. Other times it could have been last week. You were in it for long? Right through, I volunteered. Daft as a brush. Jack was my corporal then. I was a corporal myself by the time we finished. Places we saw, Passchendaele, Somme, Wipers. Jack and me, we... Well, Mr. Headley. Oh, I'm talking too much. No, please, I'm interested. What about Mr. Ford? And you? He'll never tell you. So I will. Jack Ford was the answer to Earl Hague's prayers. He'd kill and it never bothered him. Not once. But my man's not like that. He killed because he had to. But it bothered him all right. It still does. Right, Sarah. Leave us be, Matt. This question shouldn't be asked and we both know it. You're perfectly right. But the man I married was rather like Mr. Ford, you see, and... Then I'm sorry for you. Yes. There were times when I could have wished he was more like Mr. Headley. But only sometimes, my lady. I think you and Mr. Headley will be very happy. Well, of course they will. Well, Matt, I'm going to glass of sherry for Lady Caroline. Uh, sorry, we've got to talk and No, then... please. I merely came to deliver a message. We'll leave you to it, then. Well, I thought you liked sitting in the kitchen. Eh? Oh, I... Did she mean that? Does he really prefer the kitchen? Nice cosy chair, good fire going, woman cooking he can make a grab at. Not wrong with kitchens. Do you even know where yours are? I suppose I could find them, if I had to. <laughs> Bless the squire and his relations and keep us in our proper stations, is that it? Where on earth did you learn that? School teacher. Tanny lass. Bonny lass. Bit of a red and all. And did you give her an opal too? You're not wearing yours, I see. Mr Channing came over to collect Roddy. They had a little chat with me before they left. So no, I'm not wearing your opal. You and Matt on about the war? Yes, we talked about it. Did you tell me I used to be a sergeant? That has nothing to do a with... A sergeant the... has two jobs. Destroy the enemy and preserve his own men. And we are see it, I'm still a sergeant. And Channing is the enemy. Roddy was the enemy and you know it. But not anymore. He surrendered. Mr Headley is the sort of person that divides the world into good people and bad people. How on earth did he ever begin to comprehend you? He never tried. He just trusted me. Trusted you? Why not? He's alive, isn't he? He's in Lavender Avenue and he's got a girl that loves him. Oh, he's got that all right. He said you had a message for me. Two things. First, I think the way you threatened Roddy and that wretched Channing was dreadful. You turned into a fairy godmother or something. Let go. You're forgetting your manners, Lady Caroline. Please. Roddy's fellows gave me a belt in. I had you forgotten. I've no doubt you've returned it. I've seen one. The other will keep for a bit. But you'll find him. Oh, I... I can understand that. But blackmail. Honestly. It was you that gave us the idea, Bonnie Lassa. Had you forgotten that and all? What's the second thing? Daddy would like you to lunch with him on Saturday. Lord Minton's visiting us. He's a member of the Fabian Society. And Daddy thought that might amuse you. Minton? He's a cousin of Mummy's. He has a place in Kent. Saturday, you see? Yes. I shan't be there. I wouldn't doubt you. But Daddy would still like to see you. I'm sorry I'll be away on Saturday. I've got to go to Scarborough. 
Got to give me wife a little something. You're taking Dolly to Scarborough? You're not listening. I said I've got to give her something. A divorce. I see. Hotel room, chorus girl, private detectives, all that. Oh, yes, all the trimmings. And all because you promised Tom Seaton. You really do look after your men, don't you? Well, thank you. But I notice it's the sergeant that gets the chorus girl. Don't bother to see me out. Fabians. Matt! Hey, Matt! What? Put that lass down and away in here a minute. There's no call for that sort of talk. That sort of talk, you're a man, aren't you? Billy Seaton brought a pamphlet round here a while back. Well, he's always bringing pamphlets round. Where do we keep them? Kitchen mostly. Sarah says they get the fire we're lovely. Oh, my God. See if there's any left, will you? Sorry. Was it this one? Ah, that's right. Mind you, were lucky. That could have been having the gas away for your Sunday dinner. No, pet, not Sunday. I'll be away. Away? Where? Scarborough, Matt. Something I've got to see to. It'll take a few days. But you can't. I've got to. I gave me word. But how can I stay on here if Matt's on his own? And get that look off your face. Oh, my. I see what you mean. Matt's always been respectable. I'll tell you what, Sarah. Why don't you get yourselves a chaperone? You made you promised. Said you'd go and see your doctor. All right, Bill. Don't go on. Oh, you should have yourself a glass of milk. Good for you, milk. Soon have a glass of stout. They say that's good for you, no? Get over here. Hey, maybe I'll have one with you now. Oh, and another thing. Oh, for heaven's sake, Bill! I've said I'll go. Aye, I'll see to that. No, I was thinking about old Jesse. I've gone off to Kent. What about it? What do you mean when you said it could be the making of her? Born well, to get on, is our Jessie. But she needed a man she could manage. Jack Ford? Ah, but she didn't marry Jack. She married Arthur. Now let's see her manage him. I never ordered this. No, I did. Good health. By rights, you should ask me to sit down. You've got a lot to learn if you're going to start drinking and push your toes. Sit down, then. You said all that once before, didn't you? When it wasn't a posh hotel. The blue barrel. You were there with Tom and Mary. I snapped your head off. You were still in uniform. And now look at you. And don't start, Bonnie Lass. I brought you a present. You know. Drink I can't. your nice port, Jesse Ashton. And listen when I'm talking. Your passport to freedom, Bonnie Lass. And Fabians? Oh, I've known about them for years. Oh, Billy Your says... Billy didn't write that, though, did he? Fabian Way to a Socialist Society by H.G.A. Minton. Howard Gilbert Anthony, 5th Viscount Minton. He's got a place near your husband's new school. How in the world do you know? I rang him up. He's staying with a friend of mine, Duke of Burlington. I told him all about you. He's coming up to the school to see you in a couple of weeks. Reckons I can always use your kind of talent. Why, Jack? Why did you do it? Oh, what you've got's too rare, Bonnie Lass. Too rare to waste. And besides, your Arthur had another reason for shifting south. Now, that'll do, Jack. Aye, all right. But we both know what it is. And I reckon I owed him one. Well, now I've paid it. Let's see him give a Viscount the push. You'll never change. Never. I'm sorry, I've kept you waiting, sis. Oh, oh Billy. I'll come and take our Jess home. She hasn't finished her drink. We might have another. Who knows? You got back to your clinic, Bonnie Lad. I'll take care of your sister. Will he? Yes. You get along. I'll be all right. Time for another? No. So that's it, then? That's it. I'm off to Kent. Heaven knows where you're off to. Scarborough. Getting divorce evidence for Dolly. I see. Ah, that a folk deal. You told me something Sir Horatio Manners said years ago when you were first starting... Women would be the ruin of you, he said. Maybe they will, Bonnie Lass. Can you think of a better way to go? 
fifth Viscount. And he's a socialist. You don't need to see me home, you know. Me too. No, but I want to. Be all right. Of course it will. You said we were going to live in a palace, remember? We're neither of us the kind that would make do with the back lane. On a little dishy, thou shalt have a haddock when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the blood when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the mackerel when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the salmon when the boat comes in. <laughs> 